hey, you want to check out the Wenhao D7 Plus? I just got one. Hey guys, Chris from Versus 3D here, down at Versus 3D. Anyway, before I get into the video, we are undergoing a massive renovation type thing. So things are gonna be changing around here really, really fast. And um, I promise once everything is set up, I'm going to give you a tour of Versus 3D. I'll show you the print room. I'll show you, well, you can kind of see the, the production area. This is where I do all my modeling and all design work and all that stuff. And then over there, down there, I am going to have my finishing area where I'll have my airbrush set up and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so pardon the noise. There's prints going on in there right now. Door shut, so well. Anyway, so uh, if you caught my last video um, about the where the hell have I been, um, you will know that I was upgrading my D7 to from 1.4 to 1.5, and I really wanted to make a video on that. In the middle of it, I discovered the LCD was broken. So I got my new LCD, I got all set up again, I started to do everything, and uh, I fried my LCD controller board. <laughs> yeah, it happened. That's my life. Anyway, so I have a client who needs a bunch of resin prints done, and that's my only resin printer, so I didn't have a choice. I just went out and bought another D7, but I bought the D7 Plus. So everything's built in, brand new, all good. Anyway, so I am going to show you how to take it out of the box. Check this out. Okay guys, here it is. The new D7 Plus. Whip this puppy open. This is what happens when you import things to Canada. All right, what do we got in the box? The getting started guide. Apparently there's a little Wayne Howe magazine. Or is this the actual instructions? Hey, wow, real instructions, that's crazy. Not so bad. It's actually for Creation Workshop. I had no idea this was in here. And you get a couple of pieces of uh, the FEP. And the printer with all of the rubbery, foamy things. All right, top case, top cover, coming off. Oh, and ripping the, uh, ripping this right off. That was my fault, it didn't come like that. Here we go. And see how difficult it is to get this out of here. Actually, probably not very. Nope, not at all. All right, the box can go over there. It's packed really well. So that's this something. And we have a box.
and more foam and more straps and more stuff and things. What's going on here? Wow, these are pretty sturdy little straps. So again, it's packaged very well. Thickest zip ties I've ever seen in my life. All right, here's the print bed, and a box of presents. Resin bat, LCD. Let's see what's in the box of presents. I love presents. All right. They give you this little jar type thing to keep alcohol in. So you can do a little shaky shaky on your prints. Oh, resin, who knew? Gray. I have like three liters of this, sorry. But I like the gray, it's good. I have no idea what these are. Oh, gloves I'm thinking. Yep, gloves because it's resin, you should wear gloves. I usually don't, I have a lot of gloves. I should wear them. And it comes with the knobs. There's three different ones, well there's two different ones, there's three of them total. And extra screws, oh. All right, I'll have to figure out where those go. So, but these VAT screws, these just hold the bat in place. And then this one is for, you, there we go. This one is for the print bed. And that just screws in. Also, the little bag that I pulled off first and saving the best for last, oh yeah, a scraper. Um, my old one, what I did is I actually only used this to clean the FEP and I used a different scraper to actually pull prints off the bed and the power cord and one of these fancy drivers. Just like you see in the other videos. Ooh. Okay, let's set it up. Okay, so I dropped the power cable behind the table and powered it on just to make sure it works, everything was good. So now, we're just gonna take the build plate and screw it back in. And it basically goes to a certain spot and then it will lock. If you push it too far, it won't sit level. Level, levelly, lev it won't sit at level, there we go. Okay, so now, in order to level the build plate on this, all you do is loosen these screws here on the sides. All right, and that just loosens the build plate so it's kind of floppy. So then, you go into your utilities and basically, you can hit level, next, and then it just lowers the build plate right down. 
and it moves really slow. But I guess this kind of machine, you really don't want it to move very fast. So that's okay. All right, so now it's down resting where it should be. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just put my two fingers right here and I'm gonna tighten these screws back up. I'm just putting a soft amount of pressure on my fingers onto the plate so it's holding it in place. Now that's in place, hit OK, and I'm going to raise the Z up a little bit. Because I need to put some resin in the vat or it's not going to print shit. That is a slow. Okay, so I decided to use uh, just, I bought a little bottle of white resin a while back and I have a few liters of this white resin and I still haven't tried it. So I'm gonna try this little bottle out. Always shake your resin. And of course it's sealed so We bust out the little razor blade and we don't wipe our hands on our pants because then it will never come off. Okay, so now it's pretty milky white. So I am just gonna pour some in. Okay, nice and tight, back where it goes. Then I am gonna home the machine one more time and watch this delightfully clean plate dip into this resin and get all gooey and gross. And we're in. Okay, it's out of the box, it's set up. Now we have to slice a file for it. So we're gonna use Creation Workshop X, which is actually really easy to use, and you're gonna to have to pardon the microphone. I don't have a fantastic one for on-screen stuff. So here we go. Okay, here we are in Creation Workshop. Now I'm using Creation Workshop X, and I'll show you why in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Configure tab, okay? So now this is set for the Wayne Howe D7 PC Display 3. I run dual display, as you can probably tell if you've watched any of the videos so far. Um, so what happens is the regular version automatically detects my second display 
and thinks it's the D7 screen, so it constantly changes the resolution of the D7 screen to the dis resolution of my display. So we can't have that. Found this version in one of the Facebook groups. I asked the question and somebody had posted the response and I was like, great, done. This version works great for anybody running dual display. So anyway, so I've got my display three set up to 2560 by 1440, which is what it needs to be set at. So now if you had to change anything, you want, always wanna hit apply changes. Then we're gonna go to configure slicing profile. Apparently my backup is completed, fantastic. Um, so configure slicing profile. What we're gonna do is we are gonna use Wan Hao White and we're gonna use 100 microns to slice this. Now, something very, very important. This was a huge mistake I made. I needed a friend of mine to help me out uh, to figure out what I was doing wrong, and this is what it was. So when you're exporting, well, this is part of it. When you're exporting, you need to make sure this right here, slice to CWS, is checked. If you don't, you're gonna have a problem. Okay, so again, if you changed anything, hit apply changes. Now we're gonna go back to 3D view. So once we go to 3D view, we're gonna import a model. So we're gonna use the Spider-Man bust. And there he is, looking all handsome. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through any crazy custom anything on this because again, this is the first print on this machine. So all I'm gonna do is add some supports. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna bump up the Z axis. I'm gonna bump it up five. That's gonna leave some space under here for supports, okay? So now, after I do that, I'm gonna go over to the left side here and hit the plus sign, and this is gonna bring up my support menu. So I'm just gonna add automatic supports, so it's very simple, just click this button. It's generating. My old machine was ungodly slow on generating. If you don't have a really fast machine, this could take a little bit of time. You might go get a cup of coffee and come back. But my new machine, pretty good. So here we go. Here is the abundance of supports. You wouldn't normally need this many, but that's what it generated. So that's what I'm gonna go with. So now, Here's where the fun begins. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this file. So I'm just gonna save it right in the same spot. I already saved one, I tested it. So I'm gonna save it as the Spider-Man CWS and save the file. Yes, I want to replace it, thank you. Okay, so now this is the important thing, slice the model uh, and then it will it will update. So here was where I went horribly, horribly wrong. I could not get my D7 to print, my other one. I could not figure out why I was doing everything exactly the way I found online and nothing worked. So again, the same friend of mine was like, hey, uh, what are you doing here? Are you tell me, walk me through your process and this is what I did. So. What you wanna do is you want to, after you save it, you're gonna slice the file. So slicing it can take quite a bit of time. Again, luckily my computer's pretty quick. This will only take a few minutes. But what, you wanna, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to slice it and then save it because that's what you're used to. That's what I'm used to, but you can't. What happens is when you save that CWS file, Anytime you change anything, it automatically updates. If you save it, it gets rid of any changes that you made. So you're basically creating a file, slicing it, and then once you save it again, you're deleting your slicing. So all you're doing here is hit slice, let it finish, and then you're done. I'm gonna speed this part up so we're not sitting here waiting for a few minutes.
Okay, the slicing's done. It took about four minutes. That's not so bad. So now, if you want to look at your slice view, just click on slice view. This is the bases to the supports. And as you drag along, it will show you the slice view. And there we go. So now, again, do not click this save button. If you do, you're gonna ruin everything you just did. And if it took you a half an hour like it used to on my old computer, you're gonna be kicking yourself. So don't click this save button. So from this point, all you're gonna do is take that file that you created and save it to a USB stick and plug it into the back of the machine. Okay, and we're back at the machine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit print. Well, the USB, I put the USB stick in the back of the machine. I'm gonna hit print, and then we're gonna add a print, and we are gonna print the Spider-Man bust. So we hit that, hit the check mark, and then if you don't see this waiting here, you sliced it wrong. Um, it was a mistake I made when I first started using my D7. I was slicing the file and then saving it, and you can't do that. So you have to save the file, then slice it, it updates the file. If you save it, you delete all of your slicing. So if it doesn't say waiting, and it doesn't show you that there's, this one has 904 layers. If it doesn't show you layers, you did it wrong. So go back and do it over again. But anyway, so I did it right because I've screwed it up enough times to know that I did it right. So now I'm going to hit, well, to be, particular about this, I'm going to put the cover on because the resin should not be exposed to light for any extended period of time. Then I'm going to hit play. So this will be the absolute most boring time lapse you've ever seen. Okay, that's just about enough of that. Let's see what happens when it's done. Okay, so here we are. The print is done at 100% finished. I have gotten a couple extra things and I have actually put on a pair of gloves because I usually will wear a pair for this part. So let's see what we have. Oh, hey, it worked, score. All right, this is just uh, a a Tupperware, Tupperware container of uh, alcohol. So now we're gonna... Look at Spider-Man. Try, try to get this off. So, and this actually is my first print on this machine. I didn't like test it out first. All right, score. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off my gloves a little bit. And give this a good swirl. This is just getting off all the extra resin that isn't cured. And hopefully it looks good. So, I'm not gonna say that my ways are the best ways because even with my other D7, um, I was still pretty new at using it, so, if someone has a better way to do something, hey, leave a comment in that box down there and hey, I'll be happy to listen to it and try it and all that good stuff. All right. Well, we definitely need some calibration work because this doesn't have any of the detail that it should have. Looks almost like a little melted away Spider-Man. Just 
tearing off some of these supports. So, here we go. I mean, it's definitely not bad. It's nice and smooth. You can still see some layer lines in it. Oh, actually, no. Wow, I guess it does have the detail in it. I guess maybe if I had sliced it higher res, it would come through better. I'm gonna drop it back on the alcohol. But again, I haven't calibrated this machine. There's a calibration uh, print that you can run. Right. A little trick that I use is once I do that, good old can there. A little bit more alcohol, I think. Just get a little bit more of that excess off. I think that's what my issue is. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it looks like crap. I've seen some people say they let it sit in alcohol for like 10 minutes or so. I haven't necessarily tried it yet. I will say the wind how white. It's not terrible. I mean, it's not white. It's a little more like slightly yellowy white. But I guess we'll see once it's cured if that changes because I've printed with some clear resin and the clear resin is definitely not clear. It's yellowy. in here too, except it doesn't quite fit, just to get the resin off the build plate. Seems a little stuck there, so I'm just going to leave that in there for a minute. And I feel like I'm safe. So here we go, let's see if you can see any detail. You can definitely see the webbing from his suit now is showing through. And all the little scales that were in the model, you can actually see them. So my previous comments I feel were incorrect. I feel like it would have come out even better if I had sliced it at a higher resolution. Um, but in general, I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna bust out, I built a curing chamber. It's like fancy. So I'm gonna bust that out, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my cool little curing box that I made. Um, I had bought this LED light. It was more like a lamp that shines down and it wasn't really enough to cure other stuff. So, and I'm sorry, I'm not so steady with this. Um, so I decided to get some LED strips uh, through a suggestion of a friend and build a box. So now, this is what we have. Don't be blinded. So now, pretty much anything that goes in here gets cured from all sides. So we put Spidey in there. should be about done. So take them out. I've actually moved it around a little bit in there. And I didn't realize that in the corner, I don't know if it actually got on camera, but the very first thing I printed that, well, let me rephrase, the very first thing I successfully printed on my other D7 was this Voltron ring. And it was sitting in the carrying chamber for some reason. Probably so I wouldn't lose it. I'll lose it now though. So, there's Spidey. And yeah, I was right, it yellowed a little bit more. It actually looks more yellow on camera than it does in person, but still, it is what it is, I guess. So, hang on. 
And all right, guys, there you have it. Spider-Man. Here he is. In all of his glory. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed right out of the box. I have never used the Wayne Howe white before. I've used the gray. I've, I have some black. I've gotten some other colors. I've tried a bunch of different resins on my other machine. And to be quite honest, I haven't had a ton of success. So this actually came out really good. Um, so... I'm pretty hopeful that this new machine is going to be uh, quite good. Anyway, um, that's all I got. I'll keep you posted. I'll Maybe I'll do another video sometime, not with Spider-Man, but with something else on the D7 once I get it really a little bit more tuned up. And uh, that's about all I got. So don't forget, there's a, there's a thing like this down there. Click it. Not the one that goes like this, the one that goes like this. Click this one, not this one. And then if you wanna leave a comment, leave a comment down there. And especially if you guys, anybody who has a D7 that's watching this video, if you see something that I did wrong, please tell me, cause I don't know. And I would like to know. And if you have any t hints, tips, tricks, whatever, leave a comment, please. And uh, all that good stuff. Don't forget to subscribe over, I don't know, and then, Click the bell. I don't even know which side it's on. It's on, no, it's on this side, I think. I'm pretty sure it's on this side. Anyway, click the bell. That way you'll know when I post another video if you'd like to hear me ramble, because that's what I do, clearly. Um, anyway, this is Chris from Versus 3D. Hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy.